feels to chew five gum. Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and today I wanted to share a little bit about how digital doubles are so dang useful. Now in this video, I'm not really talking about the visual side of digital doubles, how you can blend between real characters and real footage and digital doubles and make the real characters look like they're doing crazy things. I'm going to talk a little bit more about how you can use them as like proxies and masks and things like that. A little bit less visual, but still super exciting because these things have some crazy uses. Okay, so first of all, a few examples. Last week I released this video, it ended up failing just because the bake was a little bit unstable, but it ended up being a really nice proof of concept for an interesting idea where you can use the digital double to interact with the digital simulation and make it look like the actual character in real life is interacting with the digital simulation. It's kind of strange still but you can kind of see where we're going. The really cool thing here is I'm using the digital double as, first of all, something that interacts with the digital simulation, and second of all, I'm using it as a 3D mask. That's a lot of talking. How can we actually get a digital double tracked to an actual character like this? In the tracker, we're gonna track some part of our actor for the duration of the shot. I've got a convenient hoodie zipper here to track. Then with that track selected, go up to Reconstruction and hit Link Empty to Track. Now in the 3D view, you can see the empty and let's select the camera and go down and enable our background images, or video in this case. And hey, the empty follows the footage. I'm going to use a free add-on called MB Lab to import a basic guy. And I'm going to match this guy up to the background image and parent the rig to the empty. Now with automatic keyframes enabled, I'm going to select the rig and just make sure that's matching up with rotation and location throughout the footage. Taking a look at the shoulders will really help you to line this up pretty well. And then it's just a matter of hopping into pose mode and animating the limbs. In this particular shot, I only have to worry about the arms and head and neck. So it wasn't too hard. But the more time you spend here making sure things match up, the better a mask you'll get eventually. Cool! Now you can use this guy as a collision object for your gas simulations. To create a 3D mask, we're just going to take the collision guy, duplicate it with Shift D, hit M to add in a new collection, and I'm going to call this one mask. In the outliner, I'm going to make sure this guy is visible in the render. You can do that by checking the camera icon. Then let's go up into the filters and check this little icon. And now we can make our mask collection a holdout. Cool. Now when we render it out, our 3D mask is built in to the view layer. If you found this useful and you're interested in learning more about visual effects in Blender, I've created a completely free video for you. And in this quick video, I share five tips for how you can take your CG creations and make them look like they're in actual footage. So if you're interested in that, definitely give it a click. There's a link in the description. But hey, I hope you have an excellent day, and cheers!